Hello, good night. Hello, teacher. Hello. How are you? So again, we are going to wait a moment for the other participants. Vamos a esperar un momento a que se conecte la mayoría. Okay. This is a session number two. Vamos a iniciar la sesión número dos de este curso. So, we are going to remember some things that we were um, learning yesterday. And now we are going to develop another topic that is very interesting. And we are going to learn some new things, I think, about this topic. So, we are going to start uh, remembering some things about yesterday. So, I I am going to share the screen with you. So let's see. Let me change this because I want to see all of you like this. So now we have here the topics that we were uh, developing yesterday. The first thing that we were doing was introduce ourselves talking about information that we are going to give to new people that we are meeting. Then we were talking about the possessive adjectives. And now we are going to talk about something new. It is not related to the topics that we were learning yesterday. This is the new topic that we have here and it's about questions. We are going to learn some information about questions. So we have the objective here and it says, by the end of this lesson, participants will be able to ask and answer questions with B, with the verb B in this case, using WH question words like what, who, where, when, and how. So, and in this case, we are going to talk about questions. Vamos a aprender sobre preguntas. Cómo uh, formular las preguntas, cómo hacerlas, cómo responder. So, um, maybe questions uh, can be a little difficult in English. Uh, the first thing to remember is that there are two main kinds. The yes or no question and the WH question that we can say that are the open questions. Uh, sometimes for learners, in this case, you are learning a new language. Um, it's kind of hard to understand the usage of these questions, but now we are going to uh, develop this skill to create question. So we have two kinds of question and we are going to develop them today. So let's see. We are going to begin with the information. So um, there are two, Oh. Hmm. There are two main uh, kinds of question. Yes, no question or closed. That we know that closed or we have WH questions that are open. So in the first one, um, we are going to give just yes, no answers. Uh, there are like a specific affirmation or, ne or something negative that they want to ask. But in the second one, that is the WH questions, 
we are going to add all the information that we are going to give or that we want to give to the person that is asking. Para este tipo de preguntas, para las yes no questions, ya vemos que son eh, preguntas que nos, no nos van a dar la libertad de responder con todo lo que nosotros queremos decir. Es puntual, sí o no. Pero en las WH questions, that are open questions, eh, nosotros sí podemos agregar toda la información que nosotros queremos. So, we are going to divide this information into different parts. We are going to start with number one, and we have the yes, no kind of question. Yes, no kind. Need the answer yes or no. That is very or pretty obvious. Um, need the answer yes or no. Yes or no. Okay, this is pretty easy, right? Ese tipo solo necesita el sí o el no. We have some examples. Let's see. And we have here. And I have here, like this. We have, do you like chocolate? Do you like chocolate? Yes or no? Simple. Yes, I uh, I like chocolate or no, I'm not. No, I don't like in this case because we are using the do. When we have this auxiliary here, I'm going to answer using that auxiliary too. For example, yes, I do like, or maybe yes, I do. Simple. Or we can say in negative, no, I don't like, or no, I do not like. Simple como eso. Solo vamos a agregar, yes, I do, or no, I don't. Simple, simple. Then we have another one. Is he from India? Is he from India? Yes, he is. No, he is not. That's it. Nos está preguntando si es de ese lugar. Solamente nos limitamos a responder sí o no. Then, another one. Have you been to Japan? Has estado en Japón? Have you been in Japan? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Or, yes, I have. No, I haven't. I haven't. Simple as that. In that kind of questions, we are not going to extend. We are not going to give more information than the necessary. It is just like yes or no. It is like when someone says, do you like to eat pupusas? Yes, I like. Or no, I don't like. Just yes or no uh, answers. Then, in this category, we are going to focus in this question with verb to be. Vamos a centrarnos, in this case, in this kind of question, this one. No, that, that is not the one that I want. It's this one. So, this. So, we are going to focus on a question with verb to be. We are going to create question with verb to be at the beginning of the statement. If you can see, we have three different types of, of questions in this category, but now we need to see just the question with verb to be. Vamos a ver solo las que empiezan con el verbo to be. 
And we have the verb to be, we already know that is, um, are, is. And in this case, these words comes before the subject. Comes before the subject. Then we have the verb to be changed depending on the subject. Depending on the subject. So we have three forms in present to use the verb to be. We have am, um, are, and is. Tenemos tres eh, formas, ¿verdad? Del verbo to be en presente que vamos a utilizar para nuestras oraciones o para nuestras preguntas. And the second one says, that is the answer for the first uh, thing that we are uh, seeing in this uh, category is why we have three different uh, kinds of words that we are going to use with the verb to be. Is that the verb change depending on the subject. El, eh, verbo to be es bastante amplio y cambia dependiendo del sujeto con el que lo estemos utilizando. Por eso utilizamos tres tipos diferentes, el am, el is y el are. So, vamos a ver una tabla donde nos queda mejor, ¿verdad? Esa eh, explicación, pero vamos a ver la estructura de la pregunta con el verbo be. Let's see. A structure, we have the structure. Here we have, and it says, first we have the verb to be, plus the subject, plus the complement, plus the question mark. So we have the structure, very simple. Now we are going to add the uh, table. And we have three, one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Like this. So we have here the subject. Mm -hmm. It's not like this, maybe, no, maybe. So let me see, like this, yes. The subject. Then we have the verb to be. And then we have the complement with the question mark. With the question, this. So we have the subject here and we have um, in this case, it is not the subject, it is the verb to be. It is like, I'm going to explain why, I, why am I writing like this? Just wait. Am, um, is, and are. Si ustedes se fijan, eso que va al inicio es el verbo to be, no es el sujeto. Pero ya les voy a explicar por qué se los escribo al revés. So, in this case, we have I, you, I mean, he, she, it. And then we, you, they. We, you, they. And we have the compliments. And it says funny, happy, and happy again. We're going to add this and this and this. Okay, so I'm going to see something here. Number one, number two, and number three. So, tenemos las categorías. Subject, verb to be, and complement. And we have a number, is in, and a specific number for that uh, order. Para hacer nuestras preguntas con el verbo to be, 
nosotros necesitamos cambiar un poco la estructura de nuestras eh, oraciones. So, in this case, the numbers are going to eh, make me understand the order of the sentence. So, in this case, I am writing first the verb to be, not the subject. So, in this case, I'm going to do it like this. Number two. Number two and number two. So, si podemos fijarnos, la tabla empieza con el sujeto, pero en la pregunta comenzamos con qué? Con el verbo to be. Por eso les pongo los números para que ustedes vean dónde vamos a hacer el cambio. So, here we have the number one. Then, again, number one. And number one. That is the order that we use in the uh, structure of the sentence. But in this case, we are creating questions. So we are going to change that element. And in this case, the number three is in the same place. Same place, same place. So we have here. So let me explain better this part. We're going to see the structure for the positive sentence and the structure for the questions. We have the positive. Tenemos la estructura de la oración positiva. Tenemos subject. Tenemos el verb to be. Y tenemos el complemento. Easy. Three parts. Solo tenemos tres partes. Ahora vamos a ver la diferencia. En question, we have this structure. First, we have verb to be. Cambiamos el verbo to be y lo ponemos en el primer lugar. Verb to be. Luego cambiamos al sujeto del primer lugar al segundo. Subject. Y el complemento queda igual. solo que le agregamos el question mark. Entonces, solo vamos a cambiar de lugar. That's it. No vamos a hacer nada más, solo cambiar de lugar. Examples, more examples. Let's see. I am a teacher. I am, I mean, I am a teacher. That is the positive one. I'm saying that I am a teacher, but I need to write that sentence in a question. So, let's see. I'm going to change. Am I a teacher? Am I a teacher? It's a question. Am I a teacher? Soy una maestra? Y en la primera, soy una maestra, pero sin preguntar, ¿verdad? Yo soy una maestra. En la otra, am I a teacher? ¿Seré yo una maestra? That is a question. Pero solo cambiamos, no hacemos nada más. No nos vamos muy lejos, ¿verdad? Then, another example. You are my cousin. Y cambiamos. Are you my cousin? ¿Eres mi primo? Y en la primera, tú eres mi primo. Y en la segunda, ¿eres tú mi primo? Lo podemos hacer con énfasis, ¿verdad? Y uno más, solo para aclarar. Let's see. Mm, ok. I am, you see, I am. Estoy ocupado. And the question, am I? Estoy ocupado. Then. We are tired. Estamos cansados. That is a reality. That we are tired. So, the question, are we tired? 
¿Estamos cansados? O oh, sí, estamos cansados. Then, uh, you are hungry. ¿Estás hambriento? En este caso es una afirmación. ¿Estás hambriento? Are you hungry? ¿Tienes hambre? My mother, mi madre está molesta. My mother is upset. Y la pregunta, ¿verdad? Cuando no sabemos si mamá está molesta. Is my mother upset? ¿Está molesta mi mamá? Una buena pregunta. So, in that case, we are not going to uh, do a lot of things with these kind of questions. Uh, we are just uh, change something in the structure. Solo vamos a cambiar algunas cosas de la estructura. No vamos a hacer mucho con estas preguntas. They are very easy to understand. Son bastante simples eh, porque ya tenemos nuestra estructura y ya tenemos la manera en la que nosotros creamos las oraciones positivas. So, in that case, we create a son of positive uh, statements and then we can change and create questions. And that's it. These kind of questions are the yes, no question. Estas son las preguntas de sí o no. Las que van con el verbo to be. Y más adelante ustedes van a conocer que también son las que utilizan el auxiliar did or do. Do en, eh, en presente y did en pasado. Pero estas que van con el verbo to be son yes, no question. So, let's see. We are going to see the other, the other, um, category of questions. Vamos a ver la otra categoría de la pregunta y vamos a ver las WH words. So, let's see. WH, um, okay. I'm going to do it like this. A WH one needs more information in the answer. Last WH uh, question needs more information. In this case, you can add all the information that you want to give to the person that is asking. So, it used a question word like where, why, and how. Like where, why, and how. Okay. We have a specific words for this kind of question. Tenemos palabras específicas para este tipo de preguntas, the WH words. So, first we have the examples, then we are going to see the WH words. Examples. Where do you live? Where do you live? Donde vives? Another example. What did she do yesterday? Esta es en pasado. What did she do yesterday? ¿Qué hizo ella ayer? Ok, hizo ayer. Nos referimos a ella. Then, Where is the station? Where is the station? Donde está la estación? So, now we are going to see some WH uh, words. And it says that uh, question words are used to gather a specific information. And we have a table in which we are going to see the English word, the meaning, and an example. So in this case, with the WH question, we need to um, have more information about a specific situation. And 
we have a specific words for um, a specific situation and using those uh, words, we can have all the information that we need. Maybe we want to know the reason of something. Uh, we need to know the date. Uh, we need to know the location. We need to, do, to know the, uh, maybe how to do something, uh, how to solve something and all of the things. But now we are going to see the English word, the Spanish meaning, and the example for this uh, kind of WH words. <clears throat> so let's see. Each nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. We have a lot of words. Like this. Let's see. Let's begin. We have English, Spanish, and we have the example. So we are one by one. We have this one where, and in Spanish is donde. And the example, but I need to do it this, uh-huh, and this one. So we have the example. What is the part? Where is the part? Donde está el parque? Easy. Then we have another one. Why? And in this one, in Spanish, means por qué? And we have the example. Why are you here? Why are you here? ¿Por qué estás aquí? What is your purpose? Next one, who? In Spanish means, ¿quién? Who is that girl? ¿Quién es esa chica? Then, what? And in this one, we are talking about the time also. Sabemos que what en español es que, but in this case, we also can use it for time. También lo podemos utilizar para el tiempo. ¿Qué, cuál o a qué hora? The example, what time is it? Then we have which, which, not like a witch with a like magic or something like that is which. And this is about a decision. This is about a decision. Es para una decisión. ¿Qué o cuál? And the example, which shirt do you like? Which shirt do you like? ¿Qué camisa te gusta? ¿O cuál camisa te gusta? Then we have how long. How long means por cuánto tiempo o cuando hablamos de medidas. And we have the example, how long is your house from here? How long is your house from here? ¿Qué tan lejos está tu casa de aquí? 
Then we have how often. That means con qué frecuencia. Con qué frecuencia, and we have the example. How often do you uh, go to the cinema? Often do you go to the cinema? ¿Con qué frecuencia vas al cine? Then we have whose. Whose. And it means the quién. And the example, whose house is this? So, in this case, tenemos who and tenemos whose. Who es para quién, ¿verdad? Cuando preguntamos sobre una persona. Pero whose es como eh, pertenencia, ¿verdad? A quién le pertenece o de quién es. Then we have how many and how much. Tenemos dos. How many and how much. Y lo vamos a dividir con dos ejemplos diferentes. How many. Y vamos a... No, we are not going to move. How many and how much? So, why we have uh, two of these ones? Because we have the um, countable and uncountable nouns. Tenemos nombres contables y nombres no contables. Entonces, tenemos dos preguntas que nos van a ayudar. Uno para los nombres contables y el otro para los nombres no contables. So, which one of these is the uh, word that we are going to use with the countable nouns? And which one is the uh, question that we are going to use with the uncountable noun? So, how many is for countable nouns? Es para los nombres contables. And how much is for los non-countable nouns? Or uncountable. Para los no contables. So, in Spanish means cuantos. And we have two examples. How much time? ¿Cuánto tiempo? ¿Podemos contar el tiempo? We have a system to count the minutes, the hours, but we can touch it. It is not like we are uh, touching tomatoes. It is like we know that we have that uh, system, but it is not like we can touch it. So in that case, it's an idea. How much time? And then, how many books? ¿Cuántos libros? Esto sí lo podemos contar y sí podemos llevar un conteo. Pero en el otro, por ser una idea, pues es algo que no lo podemos tocar y es, eh, por eso se pone en los no contables. Porque no tienen un cuerpo físico. So, then, we have how old. How old. Y estamos hablando de edad. ¿Qué tan viejo, verdad? How old are you? ¿Cuál es tu edad? En esta preguntamos, ¿cuál es tu edad? No le preguntamos, ¿qué tan viejo estás? But it's not the meaning in Spanish. It's like, uh, how many years do you have? No, are you really, really old? That is not very polite. So, then we have how, just how. And it means como. And we have the example. How did you do that? How did you do that? Como lo hiciste? And the last one, how plus adjective. Adjective. 
Y ese es para descripciones. And we have, how deep is the sea? Deep. How deep is the sea? So in the last one, we can use how plus adjectives. And um, you know that the adjectives are words that it can help us to give more information about a person or an animal or a, a, a thing. Los adjetivos son aquellas palabras que nos ayudan a nosotros a dar más información sobre una cosa, un animal o una persona. Y en este caso podemos utilizar eh, la pregunta how plus adjective to create descriptions like in the example. So we have a lot of words that we can use to create eh, questions. It is not like are you or what are you doing or something like that. Let me take this um, like very uh, small, but I need to see all the questions here. I know it is kind of difficult to see the this kind of uh, letters. So, but so if you see, we are creating sentences in a positive, but there are some ones that are in past. So, uh, oh wow, time. Um, let's see, we have this one that is in past. And uh, yeah, I think just one. So um, in a uh, past, we have two uh, ways to create questions. This is just like, uh we are just going to talk about like that but we are not going to see the examples vamos a hablar un poco sobre la creación de las preguntas en pasado no la vamos a hacer porque no estamos todavía en esa parte pero a la hora de crear eh, preguntas in past we are going to use the auxiliary do in this case did in past and wasn't where that is the past of the verb to be it's the same thing in past that you are going to create this kind of question using the WH words and the verb in past, in this case, the verb to be and the auxiliary do or did in past. And then you are going to create the question. So at this point, at this exact point, do you have any question? Tienen alguna pregunta? Um, I have a doubt. For mm -hmm. example, um, if I want to say uh, using um, who? If I say, um, I was thinking about the question, <laughs> but it, now I, I can remember. <laughs> but, but Take your time. That's okay. It's about to use um, to be mm -hmm. and at the end of the sentence. At the end? Yeah. I don't know if it's correct. But in this case, uh-huh. But I have the um, example now. Oh, who is no. who that computer is, or oh. mm -hmm. who is the computer? It's, yes, we uh, can use it. In this case, um, you have this one. Let's see this one. What time is it? Uh, you are using almost at the end the verb to be. What time Only is? when what? In that case. But in the question that you are making, who that computer is, you can use it like that. Whose computer is this, for example? Or 
Um, in some cases, you can use it at the end of the uh, sentence, but it is not like really common. Uh, as you see in these examples, you are using the verb to be in the second place. No siempre lo vamos a utilizar al final. Eh, son pocas las, las veces en las que lo podemos utilizar al final porque a veces nos sentimos más cómodos haciéndolo así, eh, poniendo las, el, el verbo to be en segundo lugar. Pero sí se puede hacer en, en algunos casos. Ok. Mm -hmm. Got it. Ok. Another one. Or maybe you have some question about the uh, platform. Tienen alguna duda con los ejercicios de la plataforma o algo por el estilo que podamos solventar in this moment? I don't even <laughs> check the oh you know, bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm going to be uh, checking the platform to. tomorrow or or um offer this class yes as um you can work in the platform when you have time it is not like you need to do it right now in this precise moment but you need to work and um do all the exercise that you want that is something that you need to do when you have the time to do it you have to um uh, answer all the exercise that you want in one moment because you are going to maybe not have enough time to do it later. Si eh, tienen la posibilidad de hacerlo, digamos, eh, ustedes tienen tiempo, digamos, el viernes en la tarde, que no tenemos nosotros la sesión, o el sábado, por ejemplo, tienen un, una media hora. Ustedes pueden trabajar en la plataforma todo lo que ustedes quieran y avanzar todo lo que quieran. No simplemente ustedes van a usar el tema uno, tema dos. No, all the topics that you want to solve. Y así van avanzando y al final, aunque ya no les queden ejercicios al final de las sesiones, pues mejor. Because you are done with your work. So, okay, we don't have question, I guess. Then we have another uh, things that we are going to see right now because it's almost, almost a time. Times really fly these days. So we are going to uh, continue with the topic. So, in this part, we have uh, the question. So we are going to listen a conversation, I, I think. Yes, we are going to listen a conversation between two people where yes, no question uh, are introduced. Let me take you to the topic number two that is related to this uh, topic. It's like, Um, es como la continuación de esto que estamos viendo, de las preguntas. So, in this lesson, you will listen to a conversation between two people where yes, no question and short answers will be introduced. Vamos a escuchar el audio o la conversación entre estas dos personas. Vamos a ver la forma en la que ellos hacen las preguntas y de qué forma las responden. Then we are going to talk about that conversation and it will be the end of the session. So let me stop this screen. We are going to stop this and I'm going to search for the conversation. So give me a moment because I need to target this one, this one and this one. Let's see. Number one. Yesterday we were uh, listening to the conversation of uh, please call me back in which there were two people uh, talking about uh, with another one. They are really, uh, they were in a party. So let's see. Okay, this one. How is it going? Se llama la conversación. How is it going? And in this conversation we have a son here and a David. Uh, in the last uh, conversation, we have a uh, David talking with Beth. In la conversación previa, tuvimos a David platicando con Beth cuando estaban en la fiesta. Ahora eh, vamos a ver a Sun He, que es la amiga de Beth, talking with David. Así que vamos a ver a los mismos personajes, solo que 
eh, platicando entre ellos. So, let's start this one with the volume. Okay. Just give me a moment to put the audio. Like this, okay. So here we are. With the sound right here. No questions and short answers. Hey, David. How's it going? Fine, thanks. How are you? Pretty good. So are your classes interesting this semester? Yes, they are. I really love chemistry. Chemistry? Are you and Beth in the same class? No, we aren't. My class is in the morning. Her class is in the afternoon. Listen, I'm on my way to the cafeteria now. Are you free? Sure. Let's go. Okay, one more time. I would like to get that kind of accent. <laughs> I want you to listen and notice how Sun He and David ask each other yes no questions and how they answer. How's it going? Hey David, how's it going? Fine, thanks. How are you? Pretty good. So are your classes interesting this semester? Yes, they are. I really love chemistry. Chemistry? Are you and Beth in the same class? No, we aren't. My class is in the morning. Her class is in the afternoon. Listen, I'm on my way to the cafeteria now. Are you free? Sure. Let's go. Okay. We have the conversation. How is it going? Uh, about the accent. Uh, I know. <laughs> I, I wanted to have that kind of accent too, but... You know, it's kind of difficult because we have our specific way to talk and we need to practice a lot with native speakers. And yeah. <laughs> that, that's the point. Uh, here in El Salvador, we have our specific uh, pronunciation of the words. Uh, people in the United States, maybe in the UK, it's completely different. Different, um, and I love it so. <laughs> yes, it is amazing. But you need to talk a lot with that kind of people to gain uh, that uh, pronunciation. But that is not impossible if you like it. If you really want to have that kind of accent, you will do it in the future. And I think it is possible for you. So, the conversation. Uh, we have David and Son here. So they are talking about a a, a class, right? Um, she asks, how is it going? That's the first uh, question that we have here. How is it going? ¿Cómo está yendo? ¿Cómo va todo? Lo podemos traducir nosotros de esa manera, esa pregunta. How is it going? Fine, thanks. In this case, we are not uh, using the yes, no question. We are using the open question. How is it going? Fine, thanks. Él le dice que está yendo bien y le agradece. But in that case, that is not fine. We can say, mm, it is not going really fine or I am not feeling good or maybe mm, things can be better in the future. We can add a lot of information with this kind of question. How are you? This is a very easy question and simple question. How are you? Como estas? And we can also add a lot of information. Pretty good, bastante bien. I'm good, I'm happy, I'm not really good, I'm feeling tired, I am eh, hungry, maybe. Podemos agregar muchas respuestas a esas preguntas. Then it says, so are your classes interesting this semester? Aquí utilizamos una pregunta con el verbo to be. Are your classes interesting this semester? Ahí no podemos agregar mucho más. Yes, they are. O oh, no, they are not. Es una eh, close question. Then, 
I really love chemistry. Le gusta mucho química, ¿verdad? Chemistry. Chemistry, are you and Beth in the same class? Otra vez, una pregunta con el verbo to be. Are you and Beth in the same class? ¿Están en la misma clase con Beth? No, we aren't. No, nosotros no estamos en la misma clase. Y ahí agrega él. Ahí sí, después de la pausa de responder la pregunta, podemos agregar. My class is in the morning. Her class is in the afternoon. Él tiene sus clases por la mañana y Beth por la tarde. Listen, I'm on my way to the cafeteria now. Are you free? Another um, question with where to be. Are you free? Estás libre? Estás disponible? And it says, sure, let's go. Sure. Esa es la respuesta, ¿verdad? Sure, seguro. O oh, cuando queremos decir sí. So, in uh, that conversation, we have the two kind of questions that we are uh, learning uh, today. The open and the close. Uh, the questions that we are going to uh, use to give more information are the open questions that we are using with the WH words. So let me uh, share this screen again because it's almost time to end the session. So we are going to end at this part. So uh, they are using both uh, kind of questions. Uh, I think in this kind of explanation, it is not like very, very complicated to understand this kind of um, structures. It is not like we need a lot of time to understand how to create questions. Um, we just need to focus on the order. Solo tenemos que eh, enfocarnos en el orden de, los, um, de las palabras para crear nuestras oraciones o nuestras preguntas. Pero no es eh, muy complicado. Obviously, when we are talking with another people, we make a mess with the information that we have in our minds. And also it's because we feel nervous with other people that maybe we can, we can make mistakes. And also remember, when we are talking in Spanish, in English, uh, in um, Japanese, in all the, the language that we have in, in the world, we tend to make mistakes when we talk, but that is very normal. Maybe we are very excited. Maybe we talk, talk very fast, like in my case. Eh, cometemos errores cuando hablamos, independientemente del idioma que hablemos. Los cometemos eh, más que todo cuando se nos enreda la lengua, que nosotros decimos, ah, se me enredó la lengua. But it's uh, normal because we, uh, try to talk very fast. And that's not like we are going to say, oh my God, it's something really bad. But uh, the thing is to practice a lot. If you like uh, English, you have to create your own group, for example. Ah, we can talk in English in our free time or we can text somebody in English. And that kind of action will help you to improve. Les va a ayudar a mejorar si ustedes empiezan a cambiar esas pequeñas cosas. Pueden tomar cinco minutos para hablar solo en inglés o para escribir solo en inglés. Or you can watch your TV shows, your movies, um, all of the things that you like in English. And you will hear the pronunciation. And it is important that you learn different uh, intonation, different pronunciations. Like you can hear people from the United States, you can hear people from UK, you can even listen people from Asia. Uh, they have a specific uh, uh, sound in their voices that are very interesting. They are not like making mistakes. They have that pronunciation like that, and it's very, very understandable. Um, hay muchas eh, personas de Asia, eh, más que todo en Tailandia, que tienen una pronunciación, we can say it is kind of funny, es un poco divertida para muchos, pero 
eh, es la manera en la que ellos pronuncian las, las palabras y son muy comprensibles las frases y todo, pero es la manera en la que ellos lo pronuncian y no está mal. Por eso les digo, cada quien tiene su pronunciación, pero si queremos mejorar, we need to listen a lot the a specific accent that you want to um, acquire. Si ustedes quieren adquirir un acento estadounidense, van a escuchar muchas cosas que vienen de Estados Unidos. Si quieren adquirir eh, acento de eh, United Kingdom, UK, escuchen muchas cosas de personas que vienen de esa zona y van a ver cómo les va a ir cambiando la pronunciación. Ya no van a decir water, van a decir water. And that's pretty amazing. So, remember, if you have questions through the week about the, the work in the platform, you can ask. Let me see. We have two things. Oh, that's good. You can uh, check the, uh, the chat and see a link that some of you have uh, shared with, with you that is very interesting. Okay. So uh, this information, uh, these audios, uh, this conversation that we were seeing in the class, you will find in the platform. Um, you can listen all the time that you want uh, the audios. You can uh, practice the conversations. And also, I think tomorrow we are going to see, uh, we are going to read something that is in the platform. We are going to read some information and we are going to an analyze that information and will help you to answer some questions that are in the platform. Uh, we are using the same information that you have in the platform. So we are going to study here, then you can study in your house all the information that we are given in the session. So, uh, I think it's time to end the session. I think you don't have a question or yes, do you have any question or something that you like to say? It's time I to say it. Tell me. Um, it's about to practice, mm -hmm. to know. Um, I know that we have only one hour per night, but I don't know if and one of the week or one of them we are going to be talking yes. here you know with the, with the classmate only yes, for of course ah, okay yes we yeah, are going because to... it's a little difficult uh, when you try to do for yourself <laughs> yes it's, but... you, you always you always ask the way that you can answer but when you you say that when you speak with someone else um you know let's uh start to be approved you know you can forget something or you can say oh i could say that why not <laughs> and but it's okay if you can do it nice the thing is that you need to um in this case you don't need to feel nervous uh, that is the, the main thing uh, because when we feel nervous talking uh, with other people, we tend to make a lot of mistakes, but it is an, even it happened in Spanish. But we are going to produce, we are going to talk. We have, <laughs> and I, I don't know if I, I can say this, but for tomorrow, we have a practice in which we are going to talk with uh, all of the, the, the participants of the, of the session. So don't worry, you are going to put into practice all the information that you have in your mind. So we are going to start from tomorrow and then we, were, uh, we are going to have more exercises in which you can talk to produce all the information. Okay. That's good. So we are going to end the session here. We are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a really good night. And we are going to see each other tomorrow in the session number two. So see you tomorrow. See ya. Good night. Yeah, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night.